distinguished guests, members of the Weather Area School District Community. As project manager for Wagner, we spent a great deal of the last three years working on this facility and trying to uh, orchestrate it so that it met your needs. Uh, I've stood in front of this board on many occasions and asked them to make very difficult decisions. I've asked them to look deep into the future to determine how many students would be here, uh, what type of education they would be, how can we best teach them. We've talked about how is the best way to spend the funds that we have available to do this building. And I'd like to compliment the board and the administration for the decisions that they made here. I think as you walk around this facility uh, today, you will see an awful lot of manifestation of very good decisions. It's our hope, of course, that these decisions will lead you into the next century with a facility that you can carry out your mission to teach our children. Um, so on behalf of the Wagner Group, the architects and engineers, uh, First Eastern Bank, uh, the contractors, member of the Prairie, the general contractor, the heating contractor, Bob Metz, uh, Jim Legand and Sons Plumbing and Heating, Semcon Electric, Reed Associates, the furniture contract, the district solicitor, Dan Scavage, and uh, certainly uh, without whom uh, this building wouldn't be where we are today, the clerk of the words, Mr. Chair Sarah. I'd like to present this plaque in this building to this school district and hope that they use it well.
lot of you out there have made memories of your days in the old fall high school, only to share them with your children. Memories are good for all of us. They help us learn the path of the future. At this time, I'd like to thank everyone involved with this project, and especially our Weatherly School Board. I'd like to get the names of all the school board members because they've put a lot of time into this. John Hart, Patricia Wigan, William Barrett, Arnold Mann, Steve Gregor, Karen Reese, George Slater, Harold Sigler, Dennis Kaiser, Solicitor, our past board, board members, Joseph D'Andrea, Grace Graham, and Patricia McClure. The Q our board secretary and the Wagner group, of course, and one other person, a man that has given this project an enormous amount of time and energy, Mr. Francis Charles Howard, the clerk of the works. He's been the person directly involved with all aspects of this building project. And most of all, thank you, the Wesley School community, for your support. To introduce to you Congressman Paul E. Kajorski from the 11th Con Congressional District. He's a friend to all of us to Harvard County. Mr. Kajorski. Thank you very much, members of the school board, distinguished guests on the dais, ladies and gentlemen of weather. You know, 1991 is just a little over 200 years from when our founding fathers, 56 idealists and visionaries, gathered in Philadelphia and the draft of the Constitution of the United States. They ended that document by saying, and we do ordain and establish this Constitution for ourselves and posterity. And how few of us can think back to those times or what this country may have been like, but if we look at the perspective of the world at that time, it was the birth of the first nation to live under democracy in thousands of years on Earth. It was a new, novel experiment people coming from all over the world started in life to develop a rich country of resources and to put a stomach pot of the best with the greatest opportunity. And at that time, 200 years ago, the concept of public education didn't even exist. That's an American institution. And it came about a half a century after the founding of this nation. The concept of institutions today all over the world, and particularly here in the United States, are probably under attack more than they have ever been. So I can cite the Congress for being one of those institutions. But that's really a very hard because not only the Congress, it's all government, all authority at governmental level, from the local council to the school board to the county commissioners to the governor to the legislature to the Congress to the president. It's not only in the political structure, it's in the churches, regardless of the faith. The hierarchy are no longer revered to the way they were when we were young, nor are they taken at face value or upon their word. The industrial white American leadership of industry constantly is under attack. Interesting parallel, because in 1991, throughout the world, the institutions created here in the United States in the form of government that we have had and taken for granted so long are finally blossoming in Eastern Europe and all around the world. But today, as we sit here, there are more people that live under democratic forms of governments and structures than have ever lived in any time. And really the first time that more people are under democratic institutions systems living outside of the United States than at any time in history. And oh, how we take our institutions for granted. And what I would like to say is congratulating the school board, not only because they were the initial charge of the administration to put the structure together, but a school isn't just bricks, gyms, and grass, library study halls or whatever may go into it in bricks and mortar. It's the life stream of the community. It's 
it's not only of the existing community, it's the past community, but most of all, it's for posterity. It is an investment in our personal futures, in our national future, and in the future of the world. And what the people here in this community have done is that in spite of all the attacks on our institutions, in spite of all the failings, the weaknesses that we see, there's not a greater form on earth because we have one, a democracy. We have the preservation of the individual's right to attain that end to his talents, what they will take. But those talents must be developed. And using the institutions of public education, you are taking from what you inherited from the past, putting it together with an investment for the future, and handing it to the magnificent children, your students today, the young people who are in the audience that will be students tomorrow, their children and their grandchildren. And as I was walking down the hall with one of the administrators, he indicated that the old high school was built in 1901, almost 100 years ago, 90 years ago. And almost half of the existence of the United States. So truly, this isn't a facility or a school built for today. It is the institution that will develop the talent in our youngsters and in posterity that will not only get control and develop and propel this community, but indeed the state, our federal, national state, and indeed the world. The scientists, the engineers, the doctors, the lawyers, the skilled mechanics and tradesmen, the people who organize commerce and business, the farmers, all these people who derive the opportunity that public education offers them to carry on the American traditions that are now the envy of the world and the model of the world. So those of us that will pick up the burden of the additional taxes to pay for this institution, no one ever takes taxes with a smile. But every time you realize that you're doing that, that is not only something for the immediate present, it's not only something for your family or something for this community, but it's a reassertion and a reaffirmation of the good fortune that we recognize to have been born America, to protect the institutions that are America, and to carry those institutions around the world. Some of these students that we see here today will be alive almost into the 22nd century. They will be developing science, technology, and institutions that we can't even imagine. Just the other day, I had the occasion to spend some time with the presidents of four of our outstanding medical colleges in the country. And the one man, one of the doctors, was telling me that if you look around you and look at three out of the four of us that are in this room today, will as a result of modern science within our lifetime and the opportunity of living to 95 years of age, which, was, which I hope I'm one of them, that life expect expectancy in the next century will be extended to a minimum of 115 years, and with some of the scientific breakthroughs that they're working on, potentially as long as 150 years of age. So that in our lifetime, we may see the minimum increase of life expectancy of one-third and potentially as far as 100%. Now that's advancement. But it's not advancement if you didn't have intellect and body to go with life. There are scientific drugs today being worked on that within 10 years are anticipated to cure Alzheimer's disease, develop and keep in an individual that's 90 years of age the mental facilities of a person 20 years of age. They're already in the process of being evaluated and approved by the, the FDA. When we look out into things we thought were great accomplishments in space, having landed on the moon, there are plans to have a space colony within 20 years that from that colony will be launching manned vehicles beyond our galaxy. We may be looking 
dopamine and breakthroughs, but some super conductivity to anti gravitation that would make all of us think we were living back in the ages of the horse and buggy as that future unfolds. That future will only unfold. This world will only go forward. This nation will only serve as the model of mankind. And this area will only prosper and have a high quality of life. If the community like yours makes the investment, the dedication, and the effort to provide the facilities to awaken the minds of the young that are here and the young yet to come, I congratulate this community, the faculty, school board, and just this good part of Pennsylvania. In spite of all the, the negatives in the world and all the disappointments we get from day to day, that you kept your eye on the long term, on the important things, on the things that will plan and hold our future and the future of this world. And that is the minds of our young. Because as we pass from this place to wherever we may go, what we leave to follow us is indeed posterity. And you have made the decided commitment to pass on the institutions of this fine land and of this community to your posterity. I congratulate you and I thank you for the opportunity. Seldom do I get an opportunity that is positive as this. This is our future. Well, most of us will be far gone before the hollow of the halls are empty. But this is indeed tomorrow to our children, our grandchildren, and those who follow. Congratulations, and thank you very much. Okay, um, right now we'd like a presentation of the slide. We have Art of Earth, who will present the United States flag. He's from the American Legion Post. And we have Charlie Barber. He will present the state flag. He's from the Weatherly VFW Post 8128. And Mark Marmel, Mar 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 president of uh, RSGF.